Hello there, Jose Rodriguez once again. In this video I'm going to try to answer a question that really has no answer. It gets asked nearly every day in most of the printing forums. Either it has two phases. What printer should I buy? And we've already done a video on that. And what paper should I use for my images? Well, that's like saying what car you should buy, what color shirt, what style of pants you should buy, you know, what kind of food sh you should eat, what kind of music you should like. It's impossible. It is the most unanswerable question in the printing world. And so, I'm, but I'm going to try to address it and I'm going to try to give you my views and what I think you should do in order to be able to figure this out for you. First of all, it is extremely subjective you know it's whatever suits you best now what kind of photographer are you do you like to do high contrast you know rock shows where you're shooting into stages full of spotlights and bright lasers and lights and your images tend to have lots of contrast that's one type of image and that might require a certain kind of paper do you do soft pastel like subjects like flowers in a garden, close-ups of, you know, macro shots of blossoms or that type of thing. Um, again, that might require some other type of paper. Do you only do black and white landscape photography or high contrast black and white portraiture? Again, it's a multitude of different types of images. And they all do well printed on certain papers. And again, if I print one image in five different papers and I show it to five different people, I guarantee you that they, each person will choose a different paper, okay, as their choice for suitability for that particular image. So there's really no answer. The best I can suggest is that you, you know, go to Epson, go to Canon, go to Hanami, or go to Canson, go to Breathing Color, go to all the different, you know, paper companies that produce, you know, Red River also, that produce papers for photo inkjet printing and guess what they provide sample packs and you can get these sample packs for quite a reasonable price probably less than you would actually pay when you're ready to buy you know your, your real packet of paper or box of paper and I'll, I have a bunch of examples here that I want to share with you um, one thing if you are into Canon printers like the now the most famous Canon printer recently is the Pro 100 eight color dye ink printer being given away practically for hardly anything for you know amazing rebates and you know if you buy it in combo with a camera and you know the deal it's it's been going on for a couple of years and there's a lot of these floating around Canon of course charges you up the you know what for ink but they're literally giving away paper for hardly nothing. They have these four in one, nine, nine for the price of one type deals and you just have to go to the Canon site and just look and look and look and look and you will find these almost on a monthly basis. So one of the examples that you can get and I have probably more paper than I will ever need. I'll, I'll, you know, that's my confession for the, for the masses out there. I don't even want to show you. But here's a good glossy paper, Photo Paper Plus Glossy Number Two, and this is a very good quality Canon paper that's completely compatible with that Canon Pro 100. Produces amazing images. Again, you can get this on that four four of. You buy one, get four for free, basically, and a lot of times they provide you with free shipping. So go ahead and and, and when it comes to that sort of thing, those type of papers that you can get so cheaply. Go ahead and get you some, forget the sample packs, get some, and that will actually get you going really quickly with your Pro 100 or any other Canon dye ink printer. Now if you want a slightly higher end glossy paper, and, and okay, let me make this clear, I'm not going to get into the structural differences of paper and the, you know, the makeup of the coating and whether they're RC or whether they're rag, whether they're cotton, whether, you know, no. I'm not going to get into that because again it's all due to preference and some people really dislike RC paper and some people really love them and some people really like burrito papers and some people really hate them you know and so anyway 
Pro Platinum. Another one that I got, you know, buy one, get four free. And there's also been some codes that you can actually insert at the end when you're about to check out, which cuts the whole thing down by 50% on top of everything else. Okay. Now, probably the most sought after paper for the Pro 100, Photo Paper Pro Luster. Again, I got this, buy one, get nine free. Okay. And this is the my go-to paper for the Pro 100 and also the 9500, which is a pigment printer even. And I've actually made even made uh, profiles for my 3800 using OEM Epson inks. Okay. Now, you want to delve into some outside the envelope, so to speak. Canson watercolor paper. This is for art. This is actually for real paintings and you buy this at your local art store. I have several videos covering this, this paper and I have shown you a multitude of these prints done in this type of paper. Again, look, go to these, these hobby shops, art shops, Michaels, AC Moore, even Amazon and look for sales. You know, you can get this pretty reasonable. Okay, now I was talking about sample packs. Red River Photographer's Choice Sampler. Look how much paper you get. Two sheets of each. They are actually marked. There's a, a list of what it contains and tells you what settings to use on your Epson or Canon printer. To print, letting the printer control color. Now on their website you have downloadable ICC profiles. If you want to go that route, that you can actually download for free and use on your Epson or Canon printers as long as you're using OEM inks. They have another sample pack, Red River. It's called a Complete Samples Kit. Again, same thing. Stack of, and, I've, and, and forgive me, but I have actually used a lot of these already so it doesn't look as high, as thick. But for instance, Arctic Polar Luster, 75 pound. Ultra Pro Satin 2.0, 68 pound, and Red River Premium Gloss, and Zeppelin Semi Gloss. In fact, some of these aren't even um, sold anymore. Aurora White, which is one of my favorite Red River non RC paper. It has no OBAs in it either, and it's a great paper for landscapes and that sort of thing, even for portraiture. Okay, so go ahead and get one of these. They're, they're only like $13 per pack, and for a while they were offering free shipping. Now for some of their higher end specialty paper, you have these packs. And for a while, for a short while, they had these at uh, five bucks a pack. Incredible. And this one I have, basically what I did was I bought several of these packs, and then I, I separated the papers that it came with, and I put them in their own separate pack. So here I have 96 pound Pecos Gloss Magna. This is like, this is like almost like cardstock. So it's a wonderful paper for all of your heavy, anything that you need that, that's heavy. And I'll try to get one out here for you all. I mean, it's like, it's like, it's like card. You may have a problem feeding this through your regular feeder. You may have to use your rear feeder if your printer has that feature. As it may have problem. Definitely will not work on a U-shaped type feeder like a, you know, one of those all-in-one printers. So here's another choice again, like I said. You, you have all of these specialty papers and you can get them, you know, like $8 for a pack. Here I have my San Gabriel Burrita. I really should get more of that. Blanco Matte Canvas. This is one of their, probably their only real um, canvas, paper, um, canvas media that they sell. And uh, Arctic Polar Luster Double Sided Pecos River Glossy. Okay, now that covers the Red River side. There's a hardly known company called Ink Press. You, some of you may know who these people are, but on eBay I was able to get these sample packs for five bucks. 
I have about 50 of them. I went crazy and I bought about 50 packs. Basically they come with, you know, they have a, a fine art pack and a regular media pack. And so they, they provide you with a way of, you know, experimenting. And this is what you need to do. You need to just buy one of these and just spend a weekend just testing all of these different papers. And use images that you normally would print from. That way you get not just one of these very impersonal images, okay, which is what you use if you really want to test your printer's ability to print correctly. You don't have to use one of these, but you know I recommend that you do. But anyway, use your own images and test it in a variety of those papers. And I tell you, you will then quickly discover which paper fits your images best or gives you the look that you are looking for or trying to achieve. All right, so that's really, if I leave you with anything, that's my biggest recommendation. Go ahead and get one of these sample packs and spend some time, download their you know, there are ICCs, if you if you print with color management, download the ICCs. Hopefully you are using OEM inks, otherwise the ICCs will you know, not really work very well for you. They might be slightly off. But, you know, download the ICCs if you use OEM inks. Go ahead and spend some time printing all of your favorite images on some of these samples, the different papers, and then sit, you know, for a few days, look at them, evaluate them, show them to your family members, and that way you can discover what works best for your particular images. Now, Jack down the road, now he will pick something totally different because these images are different and yours are, you know, different as well. And your tastes are different, his tastes are different. So there's no clear answer, folks. The only thing you could do is get one of these packs, do your experimentation, and then come up with one, two, three, four favorite papers, and then you can go ahead and order your regular packs of paper from them. Now let me show you, I'm going to leave you with a, a, a small stack of prints. I know all of you have been really loving my show and tell videos, but I have some prints here that I've done in various kinds of papers. Here's my Canson watercolor. This is a painting rendition of one of the famous lighthouses in the Baltimore Bay in Maryland. I usually like to go there in the summer and uh, take a boat ride through the bay. Basically the one that takes us through all of the different lighthouses. And this is one that I turned into a painting. So that it, you know, if I want to get that painterly look, I literally turn my, my image into a painting. And this is done with the Canson uh, watercolor paper using the ICC profile for Epson watercolor paper. Okay, now behind me, there's a stack of different kinds of Epson papers, high-end papers, low-end papers, fine art papers, Burrita papers. I mean, you name it, I have it there. So, and this is what I tell you. You need to get a, a lot of papers and just basically go and test. And you will achieve what you're looking for. You will find that magic paper that you absolutely love. Here are a mass of roots that I found. Now, when we were talking about what type of image works best with what type of paper. You saw that one earlier of the lighthouse and that I had turned it into a watercolor type rendition. Well guess what? It works perfectly with that watercolor paper. It looks amazing. This type of image, a lot of texture, a lot of contrast, detail. It's amazing how well that worked with that Canson paper. I would have thought the opposite because it's not coated. The ink just gets absorbed into the paper there's a slightly higher degree of dot gain, meaning that, you know, wicking away, and so your dots of inks are not really pin clear, but yet it works wonderful. And this is the kind of image that I would dedicate specifically for a paper such as this. And the texture of it, that watercolor texture is not that heavy, and it just produces a beautiful result. Now, does it work only on pigment printers using, you know, matte black? Not necessarily. This was done on the Pro 100. And let me see if I can get an angle where you can see this well, right there. And this is in uh, Antietam Battlefield in Maryland, Western Maryland. And you can see that worked beautifully. And this is what a dye-based ink type printer which I would have said, if had I not done this test, I would have said, forget it. No, 
You cannot use that paper for that printer. You got to use an Epson, you know, 3800 or 2880, 2400, something with a K3 ink system or a 3000, that sort of thing, and make sure you use your, you know, black, your your matte black. Well, I proved myself wrong. Okay, it worked quite well. I oversprayed it with the semi-gloss finish, and this uh, popped the contrast a little bit, and it looks great. So again, something like this was you have subdued colors. This paper is wonderful for that. Glossy, uh, glossy may not have been a good choice for this kind of print, this kind of image, I say. So again, now, back in the days when I was using the Epson Stylus Photo 2200, I printed this, and I did it on glossy paper, and there's, there is a ton of gloss differential on it. So, again, this is a loser. This is not a good, you know, paper image choice and even printer choice for this type of combination. So, again, if I had done the same image of various other papers, I would have probably found one that suited this image perfectly. And this combination just does not. Okay, so that's that's a that's a failure right there. Okay. Now, Epson luster paper, and I don't know which which kind it is, whether this is ultra luster or whatever. But anyway, a bunch of cherries. Again, mostly a single color type predominance, being red. I did this on the Pro 9500, okay, which is the Canon 10 pigment color printer. It came out beautiful. I overcoated it with the 1400. And so this really lends itself beautifully for this type of image because it's a single color with a few accents of green and the, the luster paper, glossy, a hard full blown glossy paper, no, I don't think it would have worked out so well. For this luster paper, and again, once the overcoating is applied, great. I think that worked really great. This really would have worked great also on the Canson, possibly, or just a really good matte, uh, super white background type paper. Now here's a sub very subdued internal um, shot of an old classroom. This was one of those places where you go and everything is sort of like a museum and they had an old classroom and I entered in the classroom and I shot this from the front where the teacher would have, or the professor would have stood. And the colors are very subdued and this is another Canon Pro Luster type print, okay, done on the, on the Pro 100. So again, some of you may be viewing these and say, oh, well, you know, your images are so great, they work with all the paper. No, they don't, you know. This one happened to work really well for this paper. It would have probably worked wonderfully for a nice matte paper. And I'll get you a few matte prints to look at in a minute now, and you'll see the difference. World War II Memorial, downtown Washington, D.C. This is, you know, one of those touristy shots. This works great for a nice glossy paper. And this is glossy. And again, I did it in the Pro 3800 with OEM inks. It had lots of gloss differential. I had to run it through the uh, 1400 to remove it. So you can, uh, if you get up here and you actually visually look at this in person, you'll see that the overcoated coat of gloss optimizer does not reach the edges. But then if you go ahead and frame this, it doesn't matter anyway. So again, this type of shot, this is called, you know, a bunch of snapshots that you take when you're on vacation. Fine, glossy paper, everybody loves glossy paper. You know, I'm not a big fan of it, but for that it worked really well. This was a really cheap glossy paper that I bought from eBay and um, it actually has kind of a texture to it, it's really weird and I did this on the 2200 and for some odd reason it actually has hardly any gloss differential and the 2200 was known for that, okay, it was one of the uh, papers that, it's one of those printers that you could not really print much on glossy it was great for matte, but not, not glossy or luster papers. But as you can see, this is a high gloss. There you go. You see those blinding reflections. High gloss paper, and 
again it was a cheap really super cheap eBay paper from China no name and it magically worked so you never you, you just never know what's going to work for you that's why when you when you guys ask those questions on these forums there's no answer what we tell you you know may not work for you now here is that remember that shot of a uh, the hood of the uh, car that I did earlier on this is some glossy paper and I think this is um, that paper that that um, Costco used to sell now I have totally forgotten the name anyway so that's Costco glossy paper all right on the Pro 100 dye inks and this is ink press metallic paper or metallic surface paper and for something like this this really works well it gives it a weird metallic look to it I mean it's gonna be you know if you're gonna go glossy you might as well go metallic it's in my book and this is impressed metallic or metal paper okay it's not really metal it just has a, a metallic sheen now I've seen actual wedding pictures done with this and they were beautiful on metallic paper I would have never ever thought of using metallic paper for a wedding shot are you kidding me well it actually did work and it worked really well at least to my eye someone else looks at it and it says oh my god that's horrible um, metallic paper for save the date type cards that you send out to your you know in your people that you want to invite works great on there it gives it a very unique look and one that people will kind of you know go wow that's different all right so metallic paper now let's get into some matte no this is not matte this is all oh, again this is that cheap luster paper from china i'll go really quick through these this is roll paper and it's all been overcoated with a gloss optimizer a shot of a uh, world war ii grave these are some yellow ginkgo leaves that fell down this is on just a shot of the ground covered littered with this these leaves and this is again in no name uh, luster paper from china bought on ebay on the 2200 and then overcoated with the gloss optimizer here's a very subdued grayish day in gettysburg one of the monuments and again 2200 cheap chinese paper and by the way these haven't faded at all these are old you see the cannon right here this old majestic tree just changes every season it's just beautiful and it's one that magically they have not cut down in Gettysburg okay let's get into some matte papers and why would you use a matte paper a paper that I left out staples either go to a staples store and buy their staples matte paper it's made in Germany and it's fantastic look at the color you get on this who says matte papers are subdued or do not have D max or do not provide you with contrast or saturation take a look at this okay staples matte paper and they have a type that's matte on uh, or coated on both sides this is a single coated one this is not coated in the back and I got this on eBay I mean I, I think it was a dozen hundred packs hundred sheet packs for very little money I think I spent like 50 bucks for the for the 12 packs very cheap and wonderful so again that type of scene you would think oh I would need a glossy paper for or I would need to print that on a on a die printer not necessarily look at this look at the colors on that print on matte paper I mean traditionally we think of matte paper as being dull no contrast and the video will not do it justice you just have to be you would have to be here with me by the way, if any of you folks that are watching all of this stuff live in the Maryland, Virginia area, please contact me. We'll make a date, and you can come over to my place, and uh, we'll have a field day. Yeah, 
Here we go again. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you can get great color, great contrast, great pop on matte paper. All right, this is a black and white of my son throwing pebbles in Marsh Creek in Gettysburg. And I did that neutral. I don't know how it's going to look on video. There was an old bluish type toning that you did on silver prints. And I forget what it was called. But anyway, this is a tone print. Here are some greenery. Again, Staples matte paper. They also have a glossy paper, which is very good quality, by the way. Now, they used to have this in 13 by 19, and I haven't been able to find any of it anymore. I don't know what happened to that. It was, it was fantastic. Beautiful prints. And when we do more show-and-tell videos, and I dig into the that big stack I have over there that I, I know is like four or five years old, maybe we'll find some of those. All right. So that's it. I'll leave you with these thoughts. Paper is subjective. The images that you shoot, of course, are specific to your style and your liking. And so, again, there's no answer to that question. So please think when you ask that, you're not going to really get a direct answer. You might get frustrated with the answers that you do get because there really isn't a correct answer. All right? Get yourself some of the sample packs. Experiment a lot. Use your own particular images on your printer. Don't do like me. Don't collect 21 printers. Pick one good printer and stick to that one. Pick a few papers and experiment, 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 and you will then get that answer or that seemingly impossible answer to your question. Okay? So if you like it, please like it. Please don't forget to share. Please subscribe. Until the next time, bye-bye. Happy, oh, happy printing. Bye-bye.